Okay, guys, what I wanted to do is um, illustrate to our viewers uh, some of the projects that we've got going on behind the scenes. Um, we're always looking for, for you know, new genetics, uh, new plants to add to our uh, catalog. And that's where Dave Creech comes in. Uh, he and a host of others um, are on our short list of guys that to, to, to look to for guidance on, on new plants to introduce uh, to the trade and, and for us specifically to the, the wildlife habitat nursery business. Uh, these are actually both uh, oak species. Um, and I'll ask Dr. Creech to talk about this guy here. Uh, this is Quercus rhizophylla, also known as, from a common name perspective, as loquat leaf oak is the only one I think I've ever heard. Why don't you talk about this plant for us? Well, this fascinating plant has gone worldwide, actually. It's Mexico, and our tree was planted in 1988, our very first tree after the expedition, and it's one of the largest in America. The number one tree is down the road here at the John Ferry Garden. We collected it on the same expedition. It is fully evergreen in our area. It's very marquescent, holds its foliage green until the new growth gets out about four inches and then all the old leaves fall off. In Japan, we call that Yuzuri Ha. That is, we wait for the younger generation to get out, that's the young leaf, to get out four to six inches, and then the older generation, that's us, James, yeah. we can fall away we'll fall and away. be confident right. that the new generation will take over. take over. Don't yeah. be in such a hurry to do that. <laughs> Things are a little crazy. Uh, a great plant. It's got good form. It's really a beautiful, beautiful oak. And if you get a chance, touch the leaves. They're like leather. I think it's going to be hard to get this part uh, conveyed properly over video or photography, but the, the shiny, the, the texture of this leaf is so, uh, like you mentioned, leathery, it, it's hard to even describe. I don't know other plant, many plants that have that same leaf. Doesn't texture. get tent caterpillars. Um, oh, that's a good one. Yep. Yeah. What makes this a great wildlife plant um, is it is a very consistently prolific nut producer. Um, it's, it, I, I would say it's average in terms of its drop uh, so it's not an early drop plant, it's not a late drop, it's average in that regard, but it, it produces pretty early. I think we're seeing it as, as early as four years, as late as six, um, and under good conditions. So uh, we're excited about this one. We're, we're propagating the heck out of it, uh, and you'll see it in, in the subsequent seasons. It's not released yet, it's in R&D. Um, another plant that we're equally excited about uh, is Quercus glauca. This one is also fully evergreen, uh, here, um, and that again, it'll and cast its us. yeah, and it'll cast its leaves uh, at the exact same time as it flushes new growth. Um, you want to tell me about the the origins of this one? Let's see, Quercus glaucus, China, Korea, Japan. I'm not exactly sure where it comes from, but in our zone eight and even into zone seven, it's evergreen and. Uh, I don't consider the form of it too good for a landscape tree, and it also gets quite big, and so it hasn't really made a lot of landscape uh, intrusion. You don't see it very often. It, it wants to be multi-trunk. It yes. wants to be a, a, a more of a landscape feature plant, you know, multi-stemmed, um, extremely. The, the foliage I compare uh, in maturity is close to uh, magnolias uh, in terms of the leaf texture and the shiny uh, deep green. Uh, this is also known, the only, there's two common names that I'm aware of. One is the Japanese blue oak and also the uh, ring cup oak because they have a very interesting um, acorn cap. Uh, but back to James, when I introduced this plant to Dr. Deer here, um, he, his first question is, what about nut production? Is it something we want people to, you know, to encourage? The, the answer is extremely prolific. Um, we've got a colony of, the, of these here locally and they get covered up every season over and over. Um, the, the nuts are extremely small, so we think that they'll be a favorite of turkey, but we're, we're still working on um, seeing how they react to it. Um, but they're, they're, their nuts are not large, um, but there's a ton of them. So in terms of you know, seed propagation, it's not gonna be a problem uh, from season to season. So that's why we think this is gonna be a winner uh, for wildlife and as, as also a winner for your projects. So um, these will become available in the future. They're not quite ready yet. We still got some more testing to do, but we're highly confident that this is gonna be a good plant.